Hello, everybody, and welcome to Gene's Reviews. Reviews from a regular day, where I do trailer reactions, I react to YouTube videos, I review YouTube channels, occasionally I'll review a movie, but really, I just do whatever the hell I want. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Gene's Reviews. Reviews from just a regular dude down in the basement. If you haven't already subscribed to me, just hit that subscribe button, tap the bell icon so you can be notified every single time I upload a new video. And now let's get on with today's video. This is five strangest social media post mysteries. And it's from top 10. So let's check this one out right now. Excuse me, unknown top five. Top five unknowns. The majority of people watching this video will have an active social media account that they post to at least daily. Most people have multiple. Different social media sites focus on different audiences and serve different purposes. But all are places where we can share our thoughts and news to friends, family, or even complete strangers. While most of us use social media to share information about our lives and thoughts on things that interest us, some posts are much stranger. These are five strange social media posts. Number five. A strange video posted on Twitter sent social media into a frenzy earlier this month as users tried to determine what exactly they were looking at. The post came from, of all people, a lawyer. Rogan O'Handley posted a video in June with the caption, This video is from a friend in Miami. Can anyone explain? The clip was just under 20 seconds and began with the shot of a city skyline from across a body of water. It quickly zooms in on a huddle of strange orange lights in the sky. There are six in total, one much larger than the others. Originally in a triangle-like formation, the lights slowly spread apart from one another before one suddenly speeds away. One by one, the lights either go out or speed away, leaving the largest one alone in the sky. Within hours, the video had... That's either a government experiment or it's extraterrestrial. I don't know what else it could be. Millions of views as people tried to come up with an explanation. O'Handley then posted another clip of around 20 seconds, allegedly from the same friend. It appeared to show the same light show from a different vantage point, although the person filming doesn't keep focused on the lights and seems to be trying to capture the lack of reaction from the surrounding buildings. With the chaotic times we're currently living in, many people suggested this was an alien invasion. The videos weren't the only sightings of the strange lights or orbs in the southern United States and northern Mexico. In Texas, multiple residents captured footage of strange flashing lights apparently flying in formation, and some in Houston even contacted the police. However, there were plenty of skeptics. People questioned why these were the only two videos to come from the apparent UFO encounter, given how populated the area is. Also, the wording in O'Hanley's tweet seems to suggest these were filmed by the same person, though the lights are completing the same motions. As we don't see the lights shoot away in the second video, it's possible they came back together and restarted the show for the first video. More likely, two people filmed the encounter, but only one sent the videos. Or, as many people suggested, the lights themselves are fake, added in later by editing. So far, O'Hanley hasn't come forward with any more information. Sounds like he's just going to leave it a mystery. As far as it being like an alien invasion, I don't think they want us. We're much too ignorant for them, I think. But who knows? I, I, I kind of tend to think it was, it was either staged and fake, or it was a government thing. Number four. Alexis Piala Bacala was the junior third officer working on a ship named Bulk Jupiter in the winter of 2014 to 2015. He was part of a six-man all-Filipino crew set to bring the cargo ship loaded with bauxite from Malaysia to China. The ship left its Malaysian dock on the evening of December 30th, and the crew seemed to be in good spirits. The following day, he posted a New Year's message to his Facebook page. It featured a photo overlooking most of the deck, with near clear skies and calm sea ahead of him. 
However, in a matter of hours, the weather would take a turn for the worse. It could change Possibly fast. due to some New Year's celebrations, Alexis was feeling hungover on New Year's Day. He updated his Facebook status with feeling nauseous. Writing in Filipino, he told his family and friends, dizzying sea plus hungover plus lack of sleep equals seasick. One of his friends asked where he was. He simply replied that a storm was coming and he was near Vietnam. This was the last message Alexis would send and one of the last communications received from the bulk Jupiter. Hours later, in the early morning of January 2nd, the Japanese Coast Guard received a distress alert from the ship. It immediately initiated a search and rescue operation, while other organizations tried and failed to contact the vessel. However, by the time any rescue vessels could reach the ship, it had already disappeared beneath the waves. One of the ships spotted two sailors wearing life jackets near the scene of the accident, and brought both on board. Only one, the ship's cook, was alive. He would be the only survivor. Wow. The sinking appeared to be a freak accident caused by the storm, with the cargo it was carrying possibly being a contributing factor. The cook explained that he'd been in his cabin when the ship started to roll, and as he made his way to the lifeboats, the vessel suffered a blackout and was unable to... The cargo probably shifted all to one side and just tipped it over. ...to get to the boats. Alexis's body was not recovered from the ship, and his final Facebook updates remain a reminder of how quickly things can change at sea. Number 3 On Halloween 1938, the Columbia Broadcasting System Radio Network broadcast a radio play adaption of H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds. It's a commonly quoted myth that the broadcast caused mass hysteria as people mistook the play for a genuine news broadcast about I aliens taking true. over the world. However, due to the fact that the show didn't have too many listeners and there were no aliens above the US, most people were not fooled. In a similar strain, due to the fact most people see the sun every day, not many people believe the sun vanished Twitter story to be genuine, but the strange account is still fascinating. The Sun Vanished began in April of 2018 with its first tweet, Help. This was followed by a series of posts explaining how it was late in the day but still dark outside. Tornado warnings were sounding in the next county and the sun was gone. Next was a video of a TV in a dark room showing a news piece about the riots and chaos caused by the disappearance of the sun. As the tweets went on, more characters were introduced with at least two other Sounds to me like someone's making like a short story, but they're not letting people know this is a short story <laughs> and people are starting to believe it, that it's real, you know? Counts linked to the story. At first, there was no indication what exactly was going on. Some suggested this was an ARG, but there were no puzzles to be solved and little interaction. Others suggested it was some viral marketing campaign for a new film in the Cloverfield series. Others still argued this was a Twitter account that had somehow come through from an alternate dimension where the sun really had disappeared and aliens were taking over. Eventually, it emerged that the account was being run by someone in our own dimension, a filmmaker and writer named Aiden Elliott. Elliott and a collection of other content creators have continued to post the story for over two years now, with the last update coming on May 1st, 2020. So far, the story has been entirely contained on Twitter, making it unique from ARGs, which usually lead followers down a series of internet rabbit holes, yeah, it's just though a, it looks likely other forms of media story, will come continuation. soon. While not a mystery, The Sun Vanished is definitely peculiar and particularly eerie. Sounds kind of cool, actually. Number 2 Akia Eggleston has been missing since May 3rd, 2017. Four days before her baby shower, she left her home in Baltimore, Maryland, and hasn't been seen since. Akia was eight months pregnant at the time of her disappearance, and her unborn son was in the breech position, making it a very risky pregnancy. Even so, she was still in good spirits and looking forward to bringing her second child into the world. Like many people her age, Akia shared every aspect of her life on social media, keeping her friends and family up to date with her life and her pregnancy. She also often posted thoughts about her mother, who had died from breast cancer in 2012. Akia and her mother had been very close, and one of the last posts on social media before she vanished spoke about how much she missed her. 
I really wish my mother was here, she wrote, less than a week before the last sighting of her. wonder if it's the boyfriend. Akia's family noticed something strange when Akia suddenly stopped posting to social media. But it wasn't until May 7th, the day of her baby shower, she was reported missing. Police were able to find Akia on CCTV footage at a local bank on May 3rd. What happened between then and the day of her baby shower remains a little muddled. On May 3rd, a family friend drove Akia to a number of banks where she cashed various checks and took out money. The friend later told police she was getting the money as she and the father of her child were going to purchase a house together. The friend later took Akia back to her apartment, which she shared with another young black mother. Unfortunately, police found that the camera at her apartment complex wasn't working, so after that point the trail went cold. A maintenance worker claimed to have seen Akia the day police began the investigation, but given the timeline of events, it's likely he saw Akia's roommate. Suspicion fell on the father of Akia's baby. Akia hadn't yeah. told her family who her partner was, but it later emerged it was a childhood friend of her stepfather. However, police have not named him as a suspect. Not She's 17 and it's a childhood friend of her stepfather? Wow, that's a big age difference. Number one. A scam run by people trying to gain the trust of their victims is to steal photos from a Facebook user and create a Facebook account. With that fake account, they contact the user's friends and family asking for money. This was not what happened to Chloe Cowan, a young law student studying at Dundee University. In 2018, she discovered another young woman had been copying her Instagram photos and captions for two years. Unlike the scammers, this woman wasn't just using Chloe's photos. She was actually copying the images, wearing the wow. same clothes as Chloe, holding the same poses in the same or similar locations. This event went as far as re That's really creepy. That's almost like stalkerish. You're like taking somebody and dressing like them and making your own Instagram posts and stuff. Ugh, that's a little weird. Recreating videos, including one of a photo album Chloe had made of her father, who passed away not too long ago. Chloe had no idea who this mystery woman was, much less why she was doing it. The user went by the name Honey Basra on the app, though didn't follow Chloe using this account and it's still unknown what her real name is. It was suspected the doppelganger was also a student at the same university, and she contacted university authorities about the cyber stalking. The university launched an investigation, but police were less helpful at first. Chloe was told Honey Basra wasn't committing a crime. According to her family, the call handler was very patronizing even though Chloe felt scared in her own home. They eventually issued a warning to Honey Basra, who had already deleted her Instagram account after Chloe's sister exposed the strange account on Facebook. However, they admitted her weird copycat posts weren't actually breaking the law. The girl has never been publicly identified. Some reports yes. claim she was also studying law at the university, which would be where she first met Chloe, though Chloe has no recollection of her. However, it's not clear whether the girl really was a law student or if she just portrayed herself as one on Instagram again copying Chloe's life as she did with her clothing and meal choices for the photos. Given she hasn't been identified, the reason behind the strange post also remains unknown. As the account has been inactive for two years, it seems like this was more of a joke and it's been suggested Honey Basra was simply copying the post to gain followers. That's, 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 that's really, really creepy. creepy. Yeah, I don't, I don't like, like that, that at all. Well, this, this thing's, thing's getting, getting mad. mad. Oh, oh well. well. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's weird. Let, Let me know in the comments down, down below what you think of that. that. That's really stalkerish. If, if I was that chick, I'd be like changing, moving, and changing my name and everything. That's just too creepy for me. Now, how about a joke? You know, I'm not a vegetarian because I love animals. I'm a vegetarian because I hate plants. Thank you, everybody. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hashtag mean gene, all that fun stuff. And if you like this video, tell all your friends. Leave a comment down below. And if you didn't like it, then just shut up. And I will see you next time.